Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shop. How you guys doing? Uh, making another video. Uh, first and foremost, I want to apologize for um, not dropping a video in a while. I said I was gonna do better uh, with making videos while I've been on this home time and this journey recovering from my uh, ACL surgery. Um, but a lot of shit has been going on. Um, not really in my life, not uh, not really my life personally, but um, a very good friend of mine, she and I have been best friends for 15, 16, 17 years, a long time. Um, and uh, she's gone through some extreme tragedy. Um, it's not my place to air her business out. So I'm not gonna release her name or anything or any details. Um, just know that she's gone through an extreme tragedy in life. Um, something that I would never wish on my worst enemy. And i um, just trying to be there for her uh, as much as I can. Um, it's, it's, it's insane with what's been going on in her life. Um, like I said, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. And uh, yeah, especially not my best, best friend. Um, ACL recovery is going well, uh, extremely well. My physical therapist says I'm doing uh, extremely well. My doctor says I'm doing extremely well. Right now I'm doing a lot of leg strengthening exercises, um, leg and knee strengthening exercises, um, atrophy shed in, set in really hard on my right leg. Um, so right now I'm currently um, working on regaining my full range of motion. I'm almost there. Now as far as being able to handle uh, loads uh, like load-bearing activities on my leg. It has uh, been extremely hard to do that. Um, physical therapy is still going twice a week, probably about an hour and a half to two hours per session. And uh, my physical therapist is absolutely brutal. And, and I mean that in a good way. She, you know, I told her what my goals are to, you know, be able to get back to work. And she's pushing me to try to get there. Um, so I apologize for not staying on top of the videos, like I said, life's been life's been going on. Um, been trying to eat right, work out the best I can. Um, I've actually lost uh, 25, 30 pounds since um, this surgery. The first bit of it came from just not eating. Really, the first like two, three weeks out of surgery, just because the meds and just being tired and just not feel like eating. And then after that, it just come from. Um, trying to uh, just maintain just eating healthy now that my appetite's back. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's always good news. You know, healthy weight loss is always a good thing. So like I'm down to like the uh, mid 270s now, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, been trying to go to the gym, work out, eat right. But at the same time, I don't want to do too much upper body and not legs because then I'll look like a strong crackhead. <laughs> but I digress. So um, going to do a video series on calculating your ETA. I did one long video when I first started my YouTube channel. Um, and I figured that I'm going to go back and kind of go more in depth on it. Um, and uh, kind of separate because I, I don't want to say I rushed through it but I compiled a lot of stuff into one video so I'm going to take I don't know if it's going to be one or two videos or excuse me two or three videos right here I don't know I'm still debating um so right now just look for multiple videos multiple current videos on ETA so without further ado let's uh jump into it okay so I already crunched the numbers and whatnot um Um, okay, so I'm going to give you a scenario. Let's say you wake up at 0700 one morning. And by the way, uh, disclaimer before I start, this, this first video on calculating ETA is for people who have a substantial amount of time on the 70 hour clock. This basically means you don't have to run recaps in order to successfully deliver this load. So this video is for the people who have 30, 40, 50, 70 hours on their clock or, or someone who has a 
you know, a number like in the teens, but you know, they have like a short, like 200 mile run. Um, this video applies to them. People who do not need to uh, factor in recap hours in order to successfully deliver a load. So now I'll jump into it. Uh, let's say you, um, you're on a load right now, you have a substantial amount of time on your 70, and you know, you're almost on your DOT 10 hour break, and you wake up at 0700, you go inside the Loves, Flying J, Pilot, wherever you say that, you got your morning coffee, you know, you're chilling, doing your thing before you start your day. Um, and you uh, get a phone call from your fleet manager you know, you see you have a pre-plan in the system and uh, it's kind of numbers are kind of odd. So you receive a phone call, you know, a few minutes later while you're chilling and sipping on your coffee. And uh, he or she says, hey, you know, John Doe, as you can see in your Qualcomm, you have a, uh, you have a pre-plan. I put one on you this morning. Um, look it over and tell me what you think, um, you know, you know, the load is preloaded and it's a drop and hook as far as um, pickup and delivery, you know, and the delivery says, you know, basically, uh, you know, June 23rd uh, before midnight of the 24th. So basically you have all the way up to 11.59 p.m. on June 23rd. And obviously it's currently, you know, the 22nd. Um, so you're, it's currently the 22nd at 0700, sometime between 0700, 0800. 0800 is when you're starting, you're shifting, you're rolling. So he's like, all right, look it over. Uh, tell me what you think. He says, calculate your ETA and let me know so I can start working on another load feed to get you home because you're scheduled for home time. And you're like, all right, bet. So in my previous video that I mentioned, I have a blooper right there. ETA sheet, kind of hard for you guys to see, but I have one scanned and saved on my Yahoo documents or whatever. So if y'all ask for it in the email, for an email of it, I'll send it to you. Um, so if he's, he, you know, he or she says to you, all right, John Doe, go ahead and uh, calculate your ETA on that next load and get back to me at some point in the near future so I can go ahead and, you know, fill in the variables on your pre plan and we'll keep it pushing. You're like, check Raj, you know, got it. So you whip out the sheet that I just gave you. So you have determined that through your infinite wisdom um, that your um, pre the load that you're currently on is going to take you one hour to drive to the place. Now I want you guys to write this down as I'm doing it. One hour to drive to the destination that the, for the current load you're on. And let's say it's a drop and hook, you know, drop the loaded, pick up an empty. So you, you know, take an hour to do that. So you're already at two hours. Now, the pre-plan says it's 50 miles to your next destination, your next customer. It's 50 miles there and 850 miles from your customer to the uh, receiver. So that's 900 miles. And uh, that's how, you know, that's when you have to drive between empty and loaded. So what I want you to do is use the time for the sake of this sheet. Um, clearly, if you've been driving for a while, this video, it's gonna help you, but you're gonna be able to modify it to the way that helps you out. So I want to say this one's mainly for the rookies and people that, um, if you wanna use it in your experience, put whatever numbers in work best for you and it'll work either way. Um, Let's say that uh, you have 900 miles for that trip, 50 miles empty, 850 miles loaded. And um, what I want you to also consider is how long is it going to take you to drive that 900 miles? So what I want you to do is go ahead and divide that 900 miles by 50 miles an hour. Now, I understand your truck can go faster than 50 miles an hour, but I want you to calculate that 50 miles an hour in to... Uh, factor in error that you will have, um, whether it be a traffic jam, whether it be an accident, 
um, a deer runs out in front of you, something that's going to slow you up where your truck is not going to run at the maximum speed allowed that your truck can run. So let's say your truck is governed at 65 miles an hour, you're not going to run 65 the whole time, it's just not going to happen. So 900 miles divided by 50 miles per hour, which means you have 18 hours of drive time. Now. For this next part, I want you to factor this in as well. So now you're at 18 hours for driving, plus the one hour for the preloaded trailer, or excuse me, your load that you're on currently, and then one hour for the drop and hook for the load that you're on currently. So now, now that we're down to the next section, remember this, a DOT break is required for every, a 10 hour DOT break for every 10 hours of driving. If you've cal just calculated that you need to have 18 hours of driving time at 50 miles an hour to complete this 900 mile trip, that means you're gonna have to have one DOT 10 hour break. So that's 10 hours there. All right, a pre-trip should take you about 15 or so minutes. So you're gonna do two pre-trips because you're gonna, it's gonna take multiple days. So 30 minutes there. Vehicle check. 30 minutes, or excuse me, one hour, because you have to do it for two days. A lunch, your 30 minute break, because you're doing it over a two day span, factor in both of those times. So that's one hour there. Fuel, let's say is, uh, you, let's say you fuel every single day, even though you're not going to realistically. So I'm just gonna say it takes about half hour to fuel, which it won't. We're gonna say for this example, half hour. So that's one hour total of fueling. Now, once you get to your live load and live unload, or excuse me, your destination, we already discussed that it's going to be a drop and hook. So that should take you roughly an hour. So after you add all of that up, you should get one, two plus 18, that's 20, 20 hours, uh, 30 hours, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 35.5, just round up to um, 36 hours. 36 hours total from 0800 when your wheels start turning for the load that you're currently on between, it's going to take you 36 hours from that time all the way up to the time you have finished that next load because you have calculated everything. So that leaves error in, it should take you, it should not take you that long. So 36 hours. So it's gonna take you 36 hours. What is 36 hours from 0800? So that being said, 24 hours from 0800 is 0800 the next day. Now you have to add 12 hours. 12 hours from 0800 on the 23rd is 20 hundred hours on the 23rd. So when you call your fleet manager back, you will say that I expect to deliver that load by 20 hundred hours on the 23rd. Now, if you're wondering how many hours it's going to take out of your 70, what you need to do is subtract the parts that do not actually come out of your um, 70. So you know, if you take a break, let's say when you stop and go off duty, when you're off duty or sleeper berth, it does not come out of your 70. We know that your 10 hour break does not come out of your 70. We know that every time you stop to do uh, vehicle checks or basically just get out to use the bathroom, that will not come out of your 10 hour break because it's off duty and your lunch will not come out of your 10 hour break. That's off duty. So what I want you to do is subtract those times so that being said, what you should come back down to is 24 hours. 24 hours will actually come out of your 70. So right now, that's not important for this video, but in the next video, you will see why that is important. So basically that is how you calculate your ETA with a substantial amount of time in order to get from point A to point B, plus finishing the load that you're currently on. You can apply any numbers you want to this based off the kind of truck you're using, um, your speed and whatnot. Basically, speed should be the only thing that changes. Um, 
But if you like what I just said, you know, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll start uploading this one and begin working on the next video.